I'm Vince Molinari, and welcome to the Nest Summit, part of Climate Week New York City. And I am truly thrilled to have an extra special guest with us today, Commissioner Rostin Benham from the CFTC, who's joining us today, who's really doing cutting edge work and bringing financial systems to the awareness of climate and what has to be done. I had the great benefit in the past of working with Commissioner Benham uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, as he keynoted uh, an address for us, Blockchain for Impact at the United Nations right here in New York City. So I am thrilled to hear more wisdom. Last time he captivated us, no pressure, Commissioner. I know you're gonna do the same today. Welcome, Thanks, Commissioner. Vince. Thanks, Vince, it's good to be with you. Well, I'm delighted. So when we, when we talk about this initiative, it's not uh, kind of typical uh, within CFTC or most uh, regulatory bodies. How did you come to bring this forward at CFTC? Sure. You know, I think um, I think about this a lot, actually. I think when folks in the, in the states or across the globe think about climate change and some of the challenges we're facing uh, right now and that we have been for a number of years, you know, naturally, human health, the environment, energy production, these are, these are the types of things that come top of mind. Um, and, and financial markets and the economy don't necessarily rise to that level. Um, the CFTC is a financial markets regulator. We oversee derivatives. We are a global regulator by all means. Um, and as I began to think about climate change and the sort of interconnection and in the relationship with financial markets, um, a lot became pretty apparent to me that um, action needed to be taken. And a lot of credit to um, folks domestically in the, in the private sector and also overseas, both public and private sector institutions have been doing a lot of work in this space. Um, so I really feel like this was just an effort by the CFTC that I led um, with a pretty broad initiative, convening a large group to think about climate change and financial markets. And I would say um, I spent a number of years in agricultural policy uh, working in the U.S. Senate uh, as an advisor to Senator Debbie Stabenow from Michigan. And um, a lot of that previous work um, that I thought about climate change, obviously agriculture and climate change are um, very, very intertwined. Um, but as I sort of pivoted to the CFTC as a commissioner about three years ago, I started to really plot a path forward and um, educating myself with existing literature and just thinking about the risks that we face um, in financial markets and the economy. And, and if you think about the economy and financial markets, um, financial institutions are the underpinning of the economy and financial markets themselves. Uh, and I think it's important as we continue to face these climate risks um, that we ensure financial institutions are resilient, safe, uh, and thinking about these climate risks because they're the institutions that are providing credit to our, the economy. They're the institutions that are providing risk management to the economy, and we need to ensure that they are safe and sound. And before I wrap up this first question, I, I would say that I want to give a lot of credit to financial institutions, both in the U.S. and across the globe, insurance, of course, um, they're very forward thinking on climate issues and they've been thinking about these issues for a number of years. Um, so it's not like this is happening in a vacuum at all, but I do think there's a space for um, the public sector and policymakers to work together. There has to be a public private partnership uh, with respect to climate risk. Uh, and I think, and I hope that this report that the CFTC's uh, market risk advisory committee subcommittee issued last week would be a first step towards uh, raising awareness in the States and bringing us on a level playing field with folks overseas. Well, it's one of the reasons we're extra excited to have you today. This is virtually hot off the press uh, as it yeah. came out last week. And, and you touched on, on the word risk. It, you know, we talk about our financial markets, our financial system. We haven't historically, maybe up until the point of really bringing this forward and amplifying the risks, the risks not only to climate, but the risk to our economy, the risk to our financial institutions are really coming more and more forward. And I think which is clearly evident with what's happening on the West Coast with this abundance of fires that we're in at the moment. Absolutely. And it's an unfortunate reality. And I, I say this often when I speak about these issues and, and the initiative that I started, you know, over a year and a half ago. But um, the reality is these weather events continue to happen. They're more extreme, they're more frequent. And uh, unfortunately, and I say that with emphasis, I have, you know, real world um, occurrences to point to as, as proof that these risks are real and that these risks are affecting our economy. And, you know, we could go back for a number of years, but the statistics are um, pretty evident. You know, 2019 was the hottest year on record. Um, the past five years have been the past the, the hottest years on record. 
Um, we had record flooding in the Midwest between the 2018 and 2019 years. And then obviously, uh, Vince, as you pointed out, the wildfires in the West have been growing in, in, uh, um, in a number of years. Obviously, you know, wildfire season is, is a very typical thing out West, but the, the season itself is growing much, much longer than it has historically. And as, as we're unfortunately seeing, and of course, uh, our thoughts and prayers to our, our fellow Americans out West in California, Oregon, and Washington, as they're dealing with these things that are uh, fatal in many respects, but um, destroying local communities um, uh, as we speak. So we have to think about, you know, from a financial markets perspective, the insurance industry, the, the lending, the corporate lending, the private lending, the residential lending to whether it's mortgages or, um, you know, any number of uh, other things that are intertwined within the financial system. What are those risks? Um, what questions are financial institutions asking as they provide credit uh, to individuals or institutions? Um, as we see these events continue to happen, um, you know, what does that mean for the financial system, both at a local regional level and then as a national level? Um, and how can we prevent these risks and mitigate these risks so that we, again, have a more resilient financial system and then we don't face these challenges um, from an economic and financial markets perspective as we're dealing with it from a human health and an environmental perspective. And you touched on this a moment ago, Commissioner. About a year and a half ago was the concept in the making of this. Yeah. This report's out. I haven't gotten through the entire piece yet, but I think it's 194 uh, pages, so very robust. The, the hypothesis that you started with in thinking about this and the impact on financial markets, it seems like that's only been magnified, right, and, and the importance and the priority of what this needs to take for financial markets, for capital markets in general. Yep. You know, I started the project, um, like I said, I think on a personal level, I started reading about this and thinking about this years ago. Um, I started at the CFTC as a commissioner in September of 2017. Um, and obviously, you know, my primary responsibility and focus is the jobs, the day-to-day -day of the business of the CFTC. And I do that um, with great pride and enthusiasm. Um, but we have an opportunity as commissioners to oversee advisory committees. Uh, and these advisory committees are really great tools, I think, for each of the commissioners to think about and prioritize issues that they care about uh, on a personal level or, or something that they've been reading about or thinking about from a, um, a risk perspective or just from a markets perspective, um, more generally speaking. So I oversee the market risk advisory committee. And as time went by, as I was a commissioner, um, and again, as I educated myself and I, as I had sort of one-on-one um, uh, -on -one conversations with colleagues, both in the US and overseas, I really thought this venue, this advisory committee would be a, a great place to start a conversation, to convene a group of individuals, uh, and to really raise awareness um, about this issue in, in the state. So we started last June of 2019 with a public meeting um, at the CFTC, and I asked some speakers, both um, institutional speakers, academics, and some foreign regulators uh, as well to come and speak and just sort of present a case talk about the issues, talk about the work that they had been doing. Uh, and from that, that really launched this larger effort of uh, issuing a, a press release really to convene a group of people and ask folks to volunteer their time and their, and their sort of expertise to the, to the committee. Um, and, and as of November, 2019, we really started in earnest um, the, committee, the committee's work. So over a period of you know, just almost 10 months really, um, the committee has been working and putting together, uh, like you said, a very comprehensive, thorough report on financial markets and climate risk. And I got to give a ton of credit to all the members, um, 34 members in, in, in total, and the chair, Bob Litterman, for really doing an amazing work um, at a pretty critical and very difficult time. If you think about COVID, when COVID struck, and it was really in the middle of the work of the committee, but they um, they got through it. You know, we, we pushed off the reports issuance a little bit, a couple months, but in, in the grand scheme of things, given what we've dealt with both uh, in the country and globally with the pandemic, it's pretty remarkable that we were able um, to get this out uh, at this time. So I'm really proud of it. And I think it's a, it's a good start. I think it certainly uh, perhaps exceeded everyone's expectation in the robustness yeah. and the depth. It did an incredible job of selecting the committee. I know you just mentioned there's 34 members. Yeah, maybe you can give us a little bit of a sampling of, of that selection and, and maybe who those constituents are. Sure. I, you know, having been in D.C. for a little bit, just about 10 years now and, and understanding and at least getting a better understanding of policymaking and, and how to build um, 
really momentum and progress on policy changes, whether again, as an aide in, in the US Senate from a legislative standpoint or now in the executive branch uh, when it comes to rulemakings. In my view, it's all about coalitions and building big and broad and diverse coalitions and sort of laying the groundwork um, for what uh, can be indestructible in many respects, you know, sort of metaphorically. And 34 members and the representation cuts across all stakeholders. Um, and we can speak a little bit about the CFTC's constituency, but from the, the subcommittee's standpoint, we have large um, domestic and international financial institutions and banks. We have large institutional investors. Uh, we have academics, we have public interest, we have energy companies, we have agricultural companies, we have exchanges, um, data providers. Um, so really just a, a, a very diverse group of, uh, of individuals and institutions that bring very unique pieces of expertise, uh, but they all have sort of one common uh, fundamental belief, right? That climate change is real and climate change poses a risk to the economy and financial markets. And with that sort of diversity uh, and those uh, those multi uh, viewpoint um, uh, uh, sort of shared positions, we were able to come up with a document. I think that's remarkable. And, and one thing that I, you know, again, it hasn't even been a week yet, but the vote uh, for the report was 34 to zero, so unanimous, and I think that says a lot. And there were a number of statements by the members, but I think by and large folks support the issue. They support the effort. I think they care about this deeply. They're doing things on their own, um, but really an amazing effort for folks to come together to build consensus in a time when it feels like we're otherwise very divided um, uh, on, on all issues. So really proud of the work of the committee. Amazing demonstration of the wisdom of the crowd, collaboration, yeah. SDG 17, partnership Absolutely. collaboration, moving forward together for the benefit of all. Absolutely. Commissioner, amazing report. Thank you. As we close out here, what's next? Tell me, tell me what you have on the agenda, if you could, for the committee. Sure. I mean, you know, at this point, the report's out last Wednesday. And for me personally, it's about advocacy and raising awareness. Um, you know, this is in my mind, you know, step two of the process. I think there's been a lot of uh, very, very positive reaction. And I think, especially in the U.S., where um, there's not too much of a conversation about this going on, um, it's going to really create an opportunity for me and I think the committee members to, to advocate um, and to bring this to the to the forefront of, of people's minds as we think about climate and, and climate risks, especially, you know, Vince, as you pointed out, with all that's going on in the country right now, um, especially from a climate perspective, uh, it couldn't be more important, I think, at this moment to start addressing these issues, to start asking hard questions, uh, and most importantly, to start working together uh, collaboratively and, and collective action so that we can address the issues in, uh, in an immediate time frame. Couldn't agree with that more, Commissioner. Commissioner Rostin Bennett, thank you so much for your leadership, Thanks, CFTC man. stepping forward, because I don't think there's been any man like, um, mandate like this from any U.S. regulatory body, especially in this size and scope. So thank you so much for joining us today. That was great, Vince. Thanks. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you.